All right, so as I continue to build an underpainting on top of my sketch with watercolor parts and then kind of seaming them together, um, I can always use different sources as well. And it might be useful. I don't have the energy yet of the Hans Hoffman piece. I like having this reference open uh, simply because it shows me where the strongest shadows are. But I can also have my reference image open. And I can zoom in on that so I can see the subtlety, especially in the, the folds, the shadow of her chin, um, the cast shadow of the hat, the, the sharpness of the nose, things like that. All right, then when I go back to my original, the one I'm working on and that I'm modifying, I can even take those parts and modify them slightly. Now Photoshop's taking a while now, so what I'm gonna do is close other programs I have open that I don't need. That will speed things up a little bit. So what I can do is I can take, say, the, the nose here, the line of the nose, at least in the watercolor, duplicate it with Command-J, and move it. Well, Photoshop is still taking a while. So when that happens, after I've closed some programs, um, I need to save it. <laughs> so this is something that happens quite a bit with digital painting. Is things start to lag, which is what you do not want. Then I can move that duplicate around. I can even warp it and straighten out that nose a little bit so that when I paint, I can even erase. So that when I paint the um, the sharpness of that ridge of the nose is clear. So, so many things. Then I can, of course, merge that in. I want to tuck back the corner a little bit too. There we go. And then you simply merge them together by holding down Shift, selecting those different watercolor layers and hitting Command E to merge them together. But let's keep building on it. I can also bring in other watercolor resource. I think this might be useful for the hair, so I'll tuck that in here. You have to be able to think kind of loosely and creatively. So I'll take this bunch of watercolor, copy it, paste it by enlarging it beyond its original pixel resolution. It does lose quality, but it does it by softening, which is actually okay in this, in this instance, because I want my underpainting to be soft. And I bring that color around back of her head, you see that? And then I can use my eraser, quite large. Start with a 100% opacity at the edges to get rid of the hard edge around where I lassoed. So I might paint some of those hard edges back in. 
and then go to a, a lower opacity as I kind of blend in and weave it. I'm not a big fan of black watercolor. So what I like about scans is that will bring out all the little qualities of color, even within what looks like it's black. And then I can use those later for my paintings, for my paint strokes, to inform them, to steal color from them, to fill in gaps. So if I merge those two together, Command E, then we have this issue of little gaps within. And for that, within that same layer with the watercolor, I can use my clone stamp brush. Let's do 100% opacity, but really, really soft. And I can steal from the watercolor. And again, this isn't the final painting. This is going to, this is my underpainting. This is a, a way of doing kind of speed painting. That's different than what I did with the last demo. Okay, a little seam here. Basically, we're making it our own as we go. We push color into certain areas. The shadow, this is going to be her ear, so I want to keep that kind of shadowed underneath. This is all just with the clone stamp. I'm going to take a little bit of this and put it in there. All these different techniques. Okay, so now, what else can I use? Let's see. The lower jaw, I, I guess I can bring it in. It's the right angle. And I especially like all the, the green. That will be perfect for her uniform. Copy it, bring it over, flip it horizontally. Really allow stretching, allow for distortion, play with it, warp it, make it what you need it to be. So first I'm just gonna play with the shoulders. Get some color behind them there. The way I think is interesting. I can take the opacity down a little bit. See where that's overlapping. Then warp it again. It's like pulling dough, rolling it out. Yeah, I like that. Okay, now I can erase away from it with 100% opacity. Just to kind of reveal the shapes I want. And you can even dodge and burn 
I always say do the mid-tones and do it below 30 with a soft brush. By using this watercolor, I can then burn in shadows, especially things like the collar. Underneath the, what would you call them? You just start giving a hint to the overall form. Watercolor is very flexible that way. All right, let's go ahead and bring that up to 100%. Obviously, this isn't that helpful, but we'll get there. All right. Merge those together. Well, first, let's erase the top. Hmm. Oh, I see. So we actually want to soften and erase away from this hard edge. Hmm. Okay, so now what? Bring in this reference. All of these can be used later. Colors taken from them. I'm going to take this strong kind of shaped blue here. Copy it. Bring it over. Paste it in. Rotate it. Looks like I need to flip it. Really stretch it out. I want it to be the front lip of this hat. Let's soften out its edges by erasing out at 100% with a soft brush. Leave a little bit of that paper white around it to highlight. And then let's take its opacity down and warp it to fit my needs. I can even try moving it under like that. But I think better to have it over the top and then just erase away a little bit from it. at lower opacities. Okay, now how can I continue that? Let's see. This shape here could be helpful. Back edge of the hat. off the hard edges where you don't want them. So these compositing skills just keep paying off over and over and over again. 